Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Fisher Flurry. Today, we're going to be talking about the Snowflake Performance Index. My name is Cindy, and I lead platform product marketing here at Snowflake. And today, I'm joined by Rudy from the product management team. Hey, Cindy. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Rudy, let's get started. Um, so what is the Snowflake Performance Index and how was it created? So good question. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Cindy the, um, the Snowflake Performance Index um, was launched at Summit in, in, uh, earlier in the year. And um, with the name performance as, as part of that heading, um, it obviously has to do something about performance. So I thought I'd take a step back and, and just talk through um, performance and performance improvement for a bit. So as you know, um, Snowflake releases weekly performance improvements or launches weekly performance improvements. And the great thing about these performance improvements is that you as a customer don't have to do anything to benefit from these performance improvements. They apply automatically. So when we created the Snowflake Performance Index, we were trying to find a mechanism to quantify the benefits of these improvements to our customers. And why did Snowflake decide to build this metric? The important thing for us is that some of these improvements, um, your mileage may vary if you looked at a list of these improvements. They are, they are all sorts of different kinds of improvements. So what we did is we created an aggregate index, kind of like the Dow Jones index, um, to give customers a sense of how much of these performance improvements um, or how much these performance improvements impact real world um, the real world workloads. So, you know, so what we do is we we found a way to identify what we call stable workloads. And with work with stable, we mean um, a set of workloads that do the same work every day with minimal variation. And then we have a way to compare these over time and then understand how much better things become. And, you know, this talks about the larger topic of like, how does Snowflake generally think about impri uh, improving price or performance for customers? Yeah, it's interesting. With um, Obviously, with Snowflake, um, with a consumption-based model, the way that we think about this is that if we improve performance, we automatically improve the cost and the price performance of running your system. So every week, your Snowflake environment theoretically has a higher price performance, right? It improves over time without you doing anything. So the way we think about it is by investing in performance improvements, we effectively reduce the total cost of ownership of running Snowflake week over week. So that's a benefit to Snowflake and that's a benefit to our customers. Thank you, everyone. And thank you so much, Rudy, for taking time to chat today. Just as a reminder, we post results for the Snowflake Performance Index on a biannual basis on our website. In fact, when we first announced the index at Summit, uh, we showed that between when we first started tracking the index in August of 2022 to the end of April in 2023, query duration for customers' recurring workloads has improved by 15%. We also have a new performance release note section on our docs page to highlight all of the important uh, improvements that we're making. Rudy, do you want to talk a little bit more about what those are? Yeah, so we, on a monthly basis, we publish um, release notes for all of the performance improvements we, we make with a little description of the, the kind of improvement we're making and the, and the impact of that improvement. Uh, so that's, uh, that, that you can review um, directly on the website. So be sure to check out both our website uh, for the Snowflake Performance Index, as well as those performance release notes. And for more information and additional features that are uh, focused on in the feature flurry, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.